If you happen to be on a journey to the ocean, you may come across stories about its majestic creatures. However, near Orange County, an extraordinary incident happened. On a typical Monday, passengers aboard a boat tour led by Captain Dave were shocked and saddened by what they witnessed. An 80-foot blue whale ensnared in crab traps, its massive form burdened by bright orange buoys. Someone on the boat filmed the whale as it fought to escape from the nets, which were stuck in its mouth, pulling it down. This upsetting video was posted on the tour company's Facebook page, causing many people to feel bad for the whale and want to help. For the first time on the West Coast, a group of rescue boats with local heroes and law enforcement set out to free the whale from this rare trouble, catching the eye of both marine experts and regular folks. They chased the suffering whale for hours, using long poles with cutters to carefully free it whenever it came up for air. Yet under the stress, the huge whale dived deep, slipping away from those trying to save it as night came. They had to stop and take off a tracking device, hoping to try again the next day. But by Tuesday, the hard truth hit them. The whale had disappeared into the open sea. This event, a sad mix of struggle and loss, shows a bigger problem. More and more whales are getting caught like this, a dangerous side effect of human actions. Back in 2015, the sea areas near Washington, Oregon, and California raised concerns as the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, reported a whopping 48 out of 61 whale entanglements. This number was the highest since they started keeping track in 1982. Before this, there were about eight cases a year, so the sudden jump to 48 got conservationists and marine experts really worried. The Center for Biological Diversity shed light on these figures, showing that whales were running into trouble with human fishing activities more than ever. The blue whale, a giant of the ocean, is facing tough times, with its numbers dropping a lot over the years. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has pointed out a shocking 70% decrease in their global numbers over just three generations, painting a bleak picture of their future. Their size probably plays a big role in their endangerment in today's world because when it comes to size, blue whales are incredibly huge. We're talking about creatures that typically measure between 80 to 100 feet in length, with some even reaching up to a staggering 108 feet. To understand just how massive they are, picture three school buses lined up in a row. These whales are incredibly hefty, weighing between 200,000 and 300,000 pounds, and the largest ones can tip the scales at around 441,000 pounds. That's similar to the combined weight of about 30 large elephants. Their hearts are also huge, roughly the weight of a small car, around 400 pounds. But some hearts are even heavier as they measure about 5 feet by 4 feet by 5 feet. That's truly a giant heart, capable of pumping 220 liters of blood in a single beat. Interestingly, when they are at rest, the heart rate slows down to just 8 to 10 beats per minute. The tongue of a blue whale is equally as heavy as an elephant, and it's so vast that it could accommodate about 50 people if stretched out. This astonishing fact not only fascinates, but also shows the immense size of blue whales, aiding them in engulfing large quantities of water to capture abundant krill. Shifting focus to some ancient behemoths like the Argentinosaurus, one of the largest herbivores to roam the earth, it measured approximately 40 meters in length and stood 20 meters tall. In comparison, a large African elephant today, which typically reaches heights of 2.7 to 4 meters and lengths of 7 meters, doesn't come close. The Argentinosaurus was roughly eight times the size of an elephant and far larger than a human. Then there's the Paraceratherium, one of the largest land mammals ever, kind of like a huge hornless rhino living way before the dinosaurs, weighing around 15 to 20 tons. And who could forget the T-Rex, the superstar dinosaur, up to 40 feet long and weighing around 8 to 14 tons, with a 5 foot long head, known for its speed and agility. Now back to the blue whale, the largest animal we know today, stretching 80 to 100 feet long and weighing about 75 to 100 tons. Even with these mind-blowing numbers, some dinosaurs were still larger and heavier. Let's not forget baby blue whales, starting life really large, about 8,800 pounds and 26 feet long. 
and they grow fast, like 200 pounds a day. Blue whales are also the loudest animals, making sounds as loud as 180 decibels, louder than a jet plane. Their calls, which can be all sorts of sounds, travel super far, over a thousand miles, helping them talk to each other across the big ocean. Focusing on the blue whales themselves, they're known not just for their massive size, but for how they eat. Research from institutions like Stanford University provide cool details about their lives. These majestic creatures are filter feeders, consuming vast quantities of krill by engulfing large volumes of water and sieving out the food using their baleen plates. In fact, the blue whale's remarkable size can be attributed to their eating habits, which is a routine that is truly extraordinary. At their peak feeding times, they can consume up to 2,200 pounds of krill, devouring nearly 9,000 pounds daily. To put it into perspective, that's equivalent to consuming 40 million krill every day. It's this insatiable appetite and their fascinating ability to handle it that have crowned them as the largest animals on our planet. Scientists think that blue whales started getting super big around 3 to 5 million years ago when there were plenty of krill. This led to a growth spurt that made them into the giants that we know today. When it comes to their eating technique, blue whales employ a fascinating method known as lunge feeding. Here's how it works. Upon spotting a substantial gathering of krill, the blue whale accelerates and then opens its giant mouth. As it engulfs water and krill, its belly expands significantly, nearly doubling in size. In a matter of moments, the blue whale ingests a large volume of water, equivalent to that of a large swimming pool full of krill. It then seals its mouth and uses its baleen plates to trap the krill while allowing the water to filter out. This rapid and efficient process enables the whale to capture a large amount of krill in a single swoop. Blue whales repeat this feeding trick multiple times a day to satisfy their large krill requirements. Their proficiency in this technique has played an important role in maintaining their impressive size. Studying these giants isn't just for fun, as it helps us understand how they might deal with changes like global warming or shifts in krill numbers. With blue whales being endangered, it's important to know this for their protection and the health of ocean life. Speaking of whale-human interactions, blue whales mostly hang out in deep waters chowing down on krill. They travel far between where they eat and where they have their babies, which makes spotting them quite rare. They can dive deep and stay under for up to 90 minutes, so usually we only see them if they come up to the surface. Humans don't run into blue whales very much. These huge animals usually keep away from us and our boats, with most sightings being by chance. There are whale-watching tours, but they have to keep a safe distance to avoid bothering the whales. The reason that we don't see many blue whales is that there aren't as many around us as there used to be due to whaling in the past, but there is ongoing work to protect them and their homes. Blue whales aren't a threat to people. There haven't been any reports of them attacking humans. However, they sometimes cross paths with ships, which can be dangerous for both sides. That's why it's important to know and respect where these whales live and travel to prevent any accidents. Now, despite being the biggest animals on Earth, blue whales do have enemies, like killer whales or orcas. While it's not common, there are instances where orcas attack blue whales, particularly targeting the young or weak ones. In these intense sea battles, size truly becomes an important factor. Blue whales use their massive tails, which can span as wide as a soccer net to defend themselves and intimidate these attackers. These ocean giants try to protect themselves and their babies by diving deep and swimming fast to escape from orcas. They sometimes group up, which helps them see dangers coming and stand a better chance against these tough predators. But these encounters show that even blue whales can be vulnerable, especially the little ones, highlighting the intense survival challenges in the ocean. Between 2019 and 2021, scientists off Australia's southwest coast saw orcas attacking and killing blue whales in three separate events. This was a big deal because it was the first time such attacks were recorded in detail. The orcas, in groups of 50 to 75, worked together in these attacks. Some pods, often led by females, aimed for weak spots like the tongue, a favorite part for the orcas. 
The attacks happened in a way that looked really planned out. The second one was just a month after the first, targeting a smaller, probably younger, blue whale. And then, two years later, they went after a 46-foot blue whale. In these scary moments, the orcas were ruthless, grabbing the whale's fins and jumping on its blowhole to stop it from breathing, wearing it down until they won. These attacks happen near the edge of the continental shelf, a place many blue whales pass through right into orca territory. The fact we don't see this often might be attributed to the near extinction of blue whales due to whaling. Now, as their populations gradually recover, we may witness more of these interactions, showing how the predator-prey scene in the ocean is changing. Turning to history, the 19th century witnessed a significant era of whale hunting, especially in the U.S. With over 700 out of the world's 900 whaling ships being American, New Bedford, Massachusetts emerged as the heart of this thriving industry. The city's strategic location and expertise in shipbuilding made it a prime spot for an industry that even went as far as the Arctic to hunt these giant whales. But whaling isn't just about catching whales. It was big business because of the high demand for whale oil and baleen. Whale oil was really important back then for making lamps burn and soaps, while baleen was used in all sorts of things. This business was so good that ships like the New Bedford whaler Benjamin Tucker in 1851 made a lot of money, but mostly for the ship owners rather than the crew. This whaling boom, though, was bad news for the whales, like the North Atlantic right whale, which got really close to extinction due to excessive hunting. The whalers not only had to deal with the dangers of chasing these huge animals at sea, but also with the fact that there were fewer and fewer whales left, and then things like kerosene started replacing whale oil. As time went on, the need for whale oil and baleen dropped, leading to a downturn in whaling. This decline showed the harsh reality of overhunting, pushing some whale species nearly to extinction, showing the big environmental cost of that era. When it comes to how these giants breed and live, blue whales have their babies in warm tropical waters. A baby whale, when born, is already about 23 feet long and weighs around 5,000 to 6,000 pounds or more. Right from the start, they drink more than 50 gallons of their mom's milk every day, packing on about 250 pounds daily. The milk of a blue whale is incredibly thick, resembling toothpaste, and contains roughly 35 to 50 percent milk fat. This high fat content enables the calf to gain weight rapidly, up to 10 pounds per hour, totaling over 250 pounds daily. This crazy fast growth keeps going for about six to seven months while they stay close to their mom, getting big really quickly. By the time they're six months old, they can be over 52 feet long. Female blue whales, the caring giants of the ocean, are ready to have babies themselves when they're between 5 and 15 years old, and they usually have a calf every two to three years. Even with past dangers like whaling nearly wiping them out, blue whales can live a long time, up to 80 to 90 years, roaming the vast oceans. These whales travel from the cold Arctic to the chilly Southern Ocean, covering all the world's oceans. They like the cold, food-filled waters near the poles in summer, but head to warmer waters near the equator in the winter. Their travels are all about finding food and having a safe place to have their babies, which is super important for their survival and keeping the species going. Therefore, the ultimate goal is to ensure that the blue whale, which happens to be the largest creature on Earth, remains a part of our planet and its ocean habitat stays healthy for the future. By protecting the blue whale, we're not only preserving a renowned species, but also safeguarding the diverse array of life in the ocean. This endeavor to protect them is essential for maintaining the delicate balance of marine ecosystems, allowing us to continue enjoying and marveling at the incredible life forms our planet holds. <laughs>